I want to talk about clean slate initiatives. These are efforts put on by criminal justice reform advocates, and the aim is to wipe out the minor criminal convictions of people years after they've finished serving their sentences. I'd like you to think about whether it makes sense to eliminate the criminal records of people who've served their sentences uh, from their own perspective and from the perspective of the community. Imagine that you're a 30-year-old man. Your longtime goal is to become a plumber, but you can't because when you were an 18-year-old kid, you were convicted of a felony car theft. Or maybe you're a woman in her 40s, you're married, you and your spouse want to adopt a child to grow your family but you're prevented from doing that because when you were in your 20s, you were convicted of a drug crime. Or maybe you're a green card holder and you've been in the United States over a decade, but in the last year or two, you were convicted of a misdemeanor family violence crime, so now you're facing the prospect of deportation. The people you just imagined could be members of your families, they could be your neighbors, they could be your friends, certainly, uh, they're part of your communities. There are approximately one-third of the adults in the United States who have criminal records, and they are included in the roughly 6.7 million people in this country who either are or were incarcerated or on some form of community release, such as probation or parole. These people are stained with a criminal record, that record will remain with them for their entire lives, regardless of how minor their crime was or how long ago it occurred. When a per person is convicted of a crime, uh, the punishment does not stop at the end of his criminal sentence. There may be collateral consequences that go on in perpetuity. For example, somebody who has a criminal conviction may not be able to pass an employment background test, or he may not be qualified to get into public housing, or he may not be able to find a private landlord who's willing to rent to him. People with criminal convictions often are restricted as to where they can live. They may not be able to live near a school or a daycare center. They may have limitations as to who they can live with. Sometimes they're not permitted to live with children. Often, people with criminal records don't qualify for various types of occupational licenses. For example, somebody who has a criminal record may not be able to get a real estate broker's license, may not be able to get a license to become a barber, a beautician, uh, a plumber, or an electrician. Also, people with criminal convictions often are not able to operate a motor vehicle legally. And depending on the state they live in, they may not be able to vote. These are all important collateral consequences that go along with having a criminal record. Well, these consequences just don't stop with the convicted criminal himself. They slop over, if you will, onto his family and on his community. If a person is restricted in where he can live, uh, how he can travel, uh, and can't get an occupational license, he may not be able to earn a living. So his marriage may fail. Uh, he may not be able to financially support his children. He can't pay his taxes. And he certainly can't participate in the political and social life of his community. There are criminal justice reform advocates across the country who want to help people who've gotten criminal records get their lives back in order and they're more focused on people with minor criminal records. When I say minor criminal records, I'm talking about people who have been convicted of misdemeanors or low-level felonies. These criminal justice reform advocates are sponsoring so-called clean slate statutes. Clean slate statutes are designed to wipe out the criminal convictions of people charged with misdemeanors and low-level felonies. And these expungements would take place after the convicted criminal serves his sentence and after a period of time has elapsed following the completion of the sentence. The expungements would be either automatic or after the petitioner 
files a application with either a judge or a board of parole. The criminal justice advocates uh, support these expungement efforts because they say that they will uh, promote uh, jobs and en encourage people to reunite their families and reintegrate into the community. In states where these laws exist, such as Pennsylvania and Michigan, studies show that employment has gone up and criminal recidivism has gone down for people who qualify for expungements. There are opponents, however, and these opponents say that criminal expungements only hide vital information, they hurt victims, and they create an illusion. They hide vital information in that they wipe out atrocious behaviors or records of atrocious behaviors, such as drunk driving, drug dealing, sexual misconduct, and even some forms of homicide. Uh, they hurt victims in that they uh, dash the victim's expectation that criminal offenders should be held accountable and that there is some finality in the criminal justice process. And they also create an illusion in that they say they wipe away the records of any criminal conviction. Well, in this day and age of the internet, anytime any information is online, it's likely to be on there forever. Uh, a legislature just can't wave a wand and get rid of any newspaper stories or television stories or information on the internet about the facts of the underlying offense or the fact that there was a record. There's also controversy over whether these expungements should be automatic or should come into place after the petitioner makes an application to have his record wiped clean. Those in favor of expungements say that they should be automatic because people who are eligible for expungements often don't know that they are, uh, they don't have the sophistication to apply, and they don't have the money to go forward, meaning they don't have money to hire lawyers or pay filing fees to get their criminal records wiped clean. Uh, those who oppose expungements say that if we're going to have them at all, the individual who had the record should have the drive to go out and make a written application. And if that's done, the system, whether it be a judge or parole board, can investigate the underlying facts, uh, can notify any victims, and make a determination of whether the ex-offender making the application deserves uh, a clean slate. <clears throat> whether you favor uh, expungements or not, there's certainly an admirable effort to help people to rebuild their lives by getting jobs, reuniting their families, and reintegrating into, into the community. At the same time, it's important to understand that landlords, employers, and other interested members of the public uh, are entitled to know about someone's criminal record because it reflects on that person's character. Also, public safety is a consideration in the process. So I ask you to think about whether granting these expungements, wiping out criminal convictions makes sense, not only for the ex-offender in regard to minor criminal records, but whether it makes sense for the community as well. Thank you very much.